Okay, you think men like younger women simply because they'll put up with more BS than mm-hmm. older women? Yes. It's an inexperienced you, thing. Yeah. So it's an inexperienced thing? Yeah. Like, I'm talking about men that specifically are like, oh, I want an 18 to 20 year old when they're like 35 to 40 years old. What do you have in common with an 18 year old? And then they say, yeah. You don't think and, it's based in like biology or evolution or no, psychology I don't at all. even just a little bit? Why? Wait, no. hold on. You don't, you, don't think, you don't think that there's any attraction triggers in both sexes that are, have an evolutionary or biological basis? No. None? I mean, sure, you, a little, but I don't think that a 35 year old man has anything in common with an 18 year old, and I think it's sick. It's quite amusing to witness feminists deny and ridicule age gap relationships where older men pursue younger women. The underlying reason for their frustration is crystal clear. They're keenly aware that as they age, their prospects of landing a wealthy and high status partner diminish. If you are single and you are in the dating marketplace at that time, when that happens, say you're 37, 36, 38, 40, whatever it may be, and you are still on the hunt for that man, and you hit the wall and you can see in your face that you are no longer the face that you were at, what, whether it was 30 or 35 or 25, whatever it is, you are going to be panicked. Because now you know that you are going to compete with women who are younger, who are largely more fertile, not always, but largely speaking, yes, who have that youthfulness to them, who have that estrogen, progesterone, whatever the hormonal balance is that makes someone young, it's there and you're losing it. And you become hyper aware of that. And that is why women begin to panic. One thing I notice about aging is people start to treat you so differently. Hmm. When I was younger, people would be nicer to me. Like they would go out of their way to talk to me, smile at me, hold doors open. But as I've gotten older, what I'm noticing is that people, they don't do that. It's almost like you become slowly more and more invisible. I feel like the only people that really see me are other middle-aged women. You know, it's like we give each other this knowing look. This reality is a universal law of nature with only occasional exceptions. Even men who marry women of their age often harbor doubts about whether they could have aimed higher. It's a truth that resonates deeply. Men and women, fundamentally different beings, find common ground in age being nothing more than a number. Flirting, banter, and shared laughter don't hinge on shared interests or perspectives. It's why attraction can spark between individuals with seemingly nothing in common debunking the myth that mutual interests are essential for attraction. Liberal women engrossed in dorky horoscopes and reality TV can be drawn to authoritative, market-savvy men, just as older men are drawn to younger women. As men age, they realize that beyond superficial pop culture references, women often lack substantial common ground because they don't truly mature. They simply grow older. So, if a woman is bound to be petulant and irrational regardless of her shared interests, she might as well be younger, more attractive, and capable of bearing children. And if she's an exception, showing maturity from a young age, chances are she'll embody those qualities when she's younger, a product of her upbringing rather than her age. The notion that men and women must be roughly the same age to connect is merely a feminist display of resentment toward men. Disinformation, if you will. It's amusing to hear low-consciousness men question how anyone could date a 21-year-old, insinuating that they have more in common with a 40-year-old woman. The reality? They likely share very little in common with either. Most men and women share minimal common ground beyond childcare and intimacy. Women are often absent from male-dominated hobbies, making those who genuinely enjoy them more appealing to men. Such shared interests are the exception rather than the rule, highlighting the skewed gender dynamics at play. To drive the point home, authoritarian philosophy enthusiasts have more in common with intellectually inclined 21-year-old women who delve into Nietzsche than with age-equivalent women who show no interest in philosophy, deeming it meaningless or dull. Outlier women, by nature of their shared interests, tend to be more appealing to men in general, irrespective of age, unlike the majority who lack such commonalities. For the majority, shared interests are inconsequential and unnecessary for building and maintaining a family unit. Shared values, however, hold significant weight. While interests may come and go, 
Values serve as the bedrock for understanding and cooperation within a relationship. This contrasts with the prevailing notion perpetuated, particularly in American society, that shared interests are paramount, often elevated to the status of deity in a culture deeply entrenched in liberalism. For high-earning men, the burden of career-related stress is significant, often misunderstood by women who lead more leisurely lives. While we strive to make things happen, they may spend their days lounging until noon, indulging in hours of Instagram and TikTok selfies, and then expect us to chauffeur them to expensive restaurants. The maturity disparities and entitlement displayed by young women who've yet to make significant contributions to society aren't necessarily appealing. So it's puzzling when contemporary women express outrage over men dating younger partners. Regarding older men and their attraction to younger women, it's their confidence and capabilities that are alluring. However, I'm astounded by the lack of manners and basic respect displayed towards these younger women by some older men. Their behavior can be outright crude. When confronted about their behavior, many of these young women can't handle being held accountable for their rudeness and ingratitude. They lack the emotional maturity to process a man setting boundaries and asserting standards. In many cases, the damage inflicted upon women is self-inflicted. They strive for independence, rejecting potential partners along the way, only to later regret their choices and harbor resentment. Most men simply seek a peaceful life. It's disheartening to witness these women finally confront insecurities they've long buried. What's even more bewildering is when successful women tout their accomplishments, but fail to acknowledge essential qualities like motherhood, compassion, and partnership building. What irks me the most is the double standard regarding success. A man earning 100K a year is expected, while a woman in the same position is celebrated as strong and successful. Making money takes time, yet some women refuse to date a man without wealth, preferring to wait until he's successful before showing interest. One key difference between many men and women is the need for women to broadcast their achievements. When I dated women, I often wondered, is this all you have? Their lack of support and genuine care made our interactions feel more like job interviews than enjoyable evenings. In truth, age gap relationships make more sense to men and infuriate women because as women age, their chances of settling down with financially stable partners diminish individuals they could rely on for socioeconomic security. This reality remains unchanged. And that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.